Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and today we're going to take this really fun little doodle that I did at a coffee shop just a couple days ago in my doodle journal. So this is, you know, where I'm doing my daily doodles and redraw it <laughs> big on a, this is a cheap canvas um, or t muslin type tote bag, lightweight, easy to fold it up, pack it up, shove it into your bag to have just in case. But I wanted something pretty on here. So I went ahead and transferred by just looking at that and drawing straight on with the fabric marking pen and then ink tents, pencils to do all the coloring. The magic happens when you put a wet paint brush on it. Oh my gosh, stick around guys. This is gonna be so much fun. Today, I am working on a little market bag. And this is a really inexpensive cotton muslin type market bag. It's very thin. I have a piece of plastic board. It's just corrugated board inside to keep it nice and tight. I have tape around the edges just in case I want to put a background in. I'm not sure I'm going to. The colors that I'm using are all the ink tents pencils. I could use the ink tents blocks, but this is what I grabbed this time. I do have a pencil sharpener. I have it set on the um, broadest, flattest tip. So if I need to sharpen up some pencils, I'll do that. I just don't want to waste the the color if I can. So I tend to run these really, really dull. And um, I was at a coffee shop yesterday and I drew this little guy up and I just thought it was so pretty and it had a live branch coming out of it. There were a lot of these leaves and I was going, yeah, that's okay. But then I added this other kind of design element to it. I really think it turned out cool. So what I want to do is get this, something like it, maybe not as detailed, drawn on. And I'm going to use this permanent fabric marker that I got from Arteza probably three years ago. I don't know if they still sell them or not, but any fine point fabric marker is going to work. A Sharpie marker will work too. I just... You know, this is what I grabbed. So I'm just going to test this. Ooh, it still works. <laughs> and I'm going to jump right in here and not draw anything with pencil first. I'm doing this as a meditative doodle. I'm doing it as a way to have some fun. I'm going to put down my basic color, my basic outlines. I'm going to put some of that color down and then go back in and do some more doodling over it. That's my goal. Wish me luck and I want to get it done fairly speedily. So what I'm looking at here first is that I've got this branch and it's all in front of this pot. And I think I'm going to have it have the pot over here so the branch can swing around. That sounds good to me. And since the this twining branch of leaves is in front, I can put it on first. So I'm just going to go right in and start putting some of that some of those leaves in. If I run into a leaf, I'm going to pick up my pen and, you know, move on. I don't, I, I want to have variation here. I want things to go in front of and behind. So I'm going to say this one has a little leaf. And maybe I'll go ahead and come out this way. I want it to be fairly loose. I don't want it to look like I spent a lot of time worrying and stressing over it. I'm <laughs> I'm making it up as I go along. But look at that. Isn't that cool? 
Now as I come out here towards the tip, the leaves do get smaller. Basic leaf shapes, not anything, not anything hard or really involved. You can make them as detailed as you want. And I might go back in and add some of those little details that, you know, really make me happy. I am somebody who does tend to go for a lot of detail. Let's see, let's go that way. That leaf is coming down this way. Well, that feels okay. Up here, there's a leaf like that. And there's going to be, there's, there's going to be some leaves that get tucked in to the pot also. I think that's as far as I want to go on that. I'm going to go ahead and put my pot in now. And I'm going to say the pot goes from about here to here. So I'm going to say it goes to there, comes across, and stops about here. There's a parallel line to that. I am sitting down, so my lines might go a little wonky, and I'm okay with that. This is just doodling on fabric, making something that I can that I can use or I can give as a gift. Oh, I made that one, that side a little bit, a little bit um, out to the edge. So I needed to make my, my top here a little wider. That's okay. I can put stripes on that. See, that's one of the things with doodling if things don't exactly line up you can make it work just look at things as opportunities and not as roadblocks see there's a lovely almost like a sock <laughs> like a cuff on a sock on that right there yeah so I think I'm going to finish that little leaf going down inside. This is still on the outside. That little branch is actually going to get doubled up just a little bit here and there. Give it a little bit of thickness. You don't have to, if you don't want to, I just like that. I like a little bit of thickness on there. That's cool. All right, that's that's really quite neat. I think I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a surface that it's sitting on. About like that. That's feeling good. Now, some of the fun part here. I really, really like these flowers. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some of my lines in. Just a few of them. I don't want all the lines in because if you put all the lines in, you have a problem when you go to cross your your plants over them over each other so I'm gonna put that one in and I'm gonna put that one in some of these are the like the full flower head and some of them are the seed head I guess is what I'd call them I'm gonna say that there's this one coming up going behind that see and sometimes it's easier to work with a bigger pen on a bigger place a bigger surface just don't let it overwhelm you 
If it's too hard to do something really big right now, don't do it really big. Give yourself the grace and the time you need to explore and learn and grow and then go in and start, you know, really pushing your size up or we're making it really tiny. Sometimes making things tiny is way harder. Now this pen does not stink. It is waterproof after it's dry and it uh yeah. I'm I'm I like these. I like these pens. And like I said, I don't know if they still make them or not. If they do, I'll put a link. It, you know, if it's available on Amazon, I'll put a link on there. I'm going to go ahead and put some of these flower heads on now. And that is basically a flower head. <laughs> and then all you're going to do is from the base or the tip, work your way back and forth, up and down, and fill it in with a bunch of lines. Because I'm working with a broader tip and a bigger size, I'm actually simplifying and I'm not putting as many lines in. See, there's a ton of lines in here. I'm not putting as many in, but I do want to make sure that I have enough of the base connecting it so it looks like it's being supported on that stem. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that on. If I don't like the shape, I can go ahead and resize it and then just add more lines. <laughs> Truthfully, this should be like one of your least worrisome, least frustrating type of projects because you're making it up. And if you're making it up, you don't have to worry about it being perfect to what anybody else thinks it should look like, right? This one right here is going to be one of those little flower heads. So I've got the base, just like all of the others. But this time I'm going to go the seed head. That's what it was. And I'm just going to go out and come back and out and come back. And I'll make some short and maybe some stick out funny. And look at that. Now we've got a seed head. That's all it takes. It's not hard to do. I am going to put a few things, like I'll put a stem right here and this stem coming up. It still has a flower head on it or the, you know, the, the globe, but it's going behind a line. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So all you do is make your lines and just don't draw across that, that one line there. Don't draw across it. By lifting up, you're actually leaving almost a little halo of the fabric underneath of it. I think I want that to go a little bit farther out. So it really makes it look like this stem right here is going in front. I'm going to go ahead and just throw in a bunch of these very, very loosely kind of seed head, kind of flower head. Who knows? I'm going to say that the ones that are globes are actual flowers, that they have color. So that gives us a place to put some color with our Inktense pencils. Oh, that one's kind of lopsided. But it's fun. So I've started doing some other crafty things. And because I know YouTube doesn't like it, <laughs> when I change up what I'm doing here on my channel, 
I will put the link for my for my kind of crafty channel where more stuff like this will end up going. This one's here because it's it's drawing and painting, but um, crochet or knitting, embroidery, those kinds of things, or maybe even junk journals, those will probably go over onto my onto my new channel. And I don't even know if anybody can find it yet. There's nothing on it yet. It's it's a naked channel, so I'm not going to give you the name yet. The name will be in the in the description. But oh, it's fun. I'm going to make this one kind of big. But I'm really excited to share it because I have so many things that I like to do. You know, if I want to do wood burning, I'll put it over there. If I want to do embroidery, I'll put it over there. It's, it's definitely still a creative channel, but there probably won't be too much in the way of crossover stuff. Uh, this channel is going to be still, you know, it's going to be drawing and painting and uh, doodling. And I think I'm going to do a series pretty soon here of doodling some real live things in a doodle style and then painting them. Because you know, my style really is very doodly anyway. If you have been around the channel for very long and have seen some of my marathons that I've done, I'm gonna put a leaf right here. If you've seen some of the marathons that I've done of my drawing do and doodle marathons, um, that is my style. That I'm very doodly. I'm very, very loose with it. I think maybe. Just bring that over there. I am looking at this going, I think there's a leaf. I am going to draw it in front of that. some little leaves there we go needed a little something right there for balance and I think right up here I'm going to have a have another stem and it's going to be one of those weed seed heads you know the seed head or flower head or whatever this is what it reminds me of is like the Queen Anne's lace oh that is so so cool I need to put some more of the little the little seed head weed flower thingies going different directions. There you go. Picking up that, that stem. And I think that's good. I don't think it needs any more. Maybe I lied. Maybe it needs a little bit more of a leaf over here that's coming out behind that leaf there we go the edge was a little too straight I needed to break it up a little bit we're gonna go ahead and grab out some colors here I think I want kind of a pinkish a goldish that's mustard maybe a yellow I want this sort of leaf green, maybe the Shiraz, and go for another green. That's a brighter green, apple green. 
and and maybe even a bit of a purple uh, now I don't know this this might totally backfire on me I'm gonna take a light light green also and the white I don't know if the white will show up or not so that's what the colors look like on paper we'll see what they look like on the fabric I have not washed this bag so it might have sizing in it I have not um, treated this bag I did not put any gesso on it I think I'm going to start off with some of this yellow and I'm just going to put some on I'm going to let it come outside maybe I'm not going to be precious with it I've got a fairly stiff brush that I'm going to use It does work best to have something hard and waterproof underneath of your of your surface so that you're not worried about um, if your color you know, leaks through. This is water soluble until it's been wet and then it becomes uh, permanent, even on fabric. And this isn't something that I intend to wash a bunch of times. This is a, you know, like a little market bag. So go to the, go to the farmer's market, grab some, grab something and uh, then come back with it. I'm going to put a bit of the, uh, maybe the mustard down here at the base. Mustard's kind of a brown. See, I'm putting quite a bit of color down this may bite me in the backside if I put too much color down it might just overwhelm kind of like when you're coloring on shrink plastic you don't color to the to the depth of color that you want you have to give it a little bit of room because on shrink plastic the, the plastic shrinks and all of the color condenses and becomes much much more much more concentrated yeah that that was me saying something and then concentrating <laughs> I'm just using this mustard on the stems I think that'll be good if this color bleeds out that's okay I'm gonna do it on all of them and as I said I'm not being super precise this could end up looking um, almost printed you know like if you had an offset print how sometimes the colors don't line up properly every time I like that actually I think I'm gonna put a little bit of the this kind of red into some of the into some of these branch uh, branches stems kind of where things overlap sort of as my shadow doesn't have to make sense it's a doodle <laughs> and I love doing stuff like this now you see what I'm doing here is I am kind of holding the fabric down when I'm putting some color down in a spot I'm kind of putting my hand down and spreading the fabric apart a little bit I love doing projects like this I think I am gonna put a bit of color a bit of this pink up on the t up on the tips should be fun just a bit and I'm not worried if I have pencil lines because you know this is fabric and it's going to have all of the lines from the weaving of the fabric anyway so not worried I think 
just to carry this color around a little bit. I'm going to put some of this color out on the tips of the leaves. I hope this turns out. I'm really, really excited. I have not done anything like this. If you want more doodling on fabric, this would actually be a beautiful poster. So if you were to doodle something like this on a big piece of paper, it would be a lovely poster, print, um, style type of thing. You know, you draw up your own stuff. You can do with what it, with it whatever you want to do. This is a doodle. I made it up as we were sitting here. My original doodle is totally different. Let's see. I'm going to grab this Sherbert Lemon and make that my next color in on my leaves. Not coloring perfectly, just sort of getting some color, to, color on. If you color, you know, kind of the way the leaf grows, it does make it easier if you end up with lines that don't seem to make sense. So I should probably be a little more mindful of that but I wasn't. <laughs> so I did a community post and I asked, you know, what things are people interested in seeing? What makes you want to go and grab your art materials and start creating? And the majority of people were saying, Things like this that are real things in a doodly pen style with some color. It's like, hey, I can do that. I'm more than happy to do that. That's the mustard. I really didn't want the mustard. That's okay. I think I'm going to take this dark green. This is the leaf green. And I'll just work it in. And now it's going to be kind of like a uh, magic, you know, magic paintbrush, magic coloring sheet type of thing, because we've put all of this dry pigment down onto this fabric. And when we get it wet, the pigment is going to move around and it can be unexpected in how it moves. Like I said, I am probably putting way too much on because I'm actually coloring it in kind of like, you know, an actual coloring page. My patrons, you will have this as a coloring page at some point. I just released one for you. It's a PDF on the patron um, Patreon website. So if people are interested in actual coloring pages of artwork I'm doing and other, other fun little surprises, yeah, check out my Patreon. We're a fun little group over there. We actually get to know each other a little bit better because we are such a small group. There's behind the scenes and early information and questions where they get to a answer for me, you know, things that I want to know from my, from my viewers. I ask my patrons because, you know, they're the ones that are watching. And if you aren't a patron and you're watching a lot, please make sure and leave me a comment and let me know. Not everybody can support by patronage, but 
by watching the shows, watching the videos, sharing the videos on social media and with your friends. Yeah, it helps. It all helps. I think I do want to put a bit of a shadow under the edge of that pot right there. And a bit of a shadow because I'm silly like that and I want a bit of a shadow. <laughs> And by putting my shadow kind of tucked down inside like that, it makes the leaf feel like it's lifted up and above. Like this one right here. Look at that. Just lifts that shadow right up. And you don't always see all the shadows. Now I'm making these shadows up. Some of them are not going to make sense. And that is fine. Some of them won't make sense. And I don't have a problem with that. This is a uh, Mimic Hog Filbert by Creative Mark. And I have a, just a cup of water and this. And I am going to go live dangerously, I guess. Oh, wow. That's... Oh, that's cool. Get a little bit more water on my brush. Look at that. Ink tense is ink tense. It, it's intense. Magic paintbrush. All right, now we're going to do the leaves. And I think I'm going to start from the green edge. And I'm going to work my way out to the tip. But first, I'm going to do all those little green edge. Where it kind of blends into the yellow. This green, this leaf green, is very much more olive -y all of e <laughs> very much more like an olive green and then we'll have that yellow oh but isn't that pretty i'm trying to i'm trying to to not say oh but isn't that pretty but i've not ever done this project before so Just want to get those colors wet. You want all of your colors to get wet. Now I've heard that um, some people use different mediums with their ink tents when they're doing them on fabric. And I haven't explored that. Quilters have, you know, different things that they like to do. Um, but since this is a project, like I said, that I don't intend to wash it very often, if at all, um, you know, it's, oh, that's cool. All right. So next up, I'm going to go back up to here and I'm going to get the yellow and the mustard maybe start at the 
at the yellow edge and then go down towards the mustard. And by doing that, I am trying to kind of blend that, that red down in. Blend that red and yellow together. I could go back in if I need to with some white or something like that, but part of the, the cool factor of this is that it's kind of one and done. Just put the water on and move on. Because I put enough pigment on the, you know, on the, on the um, fabric, it's not, it's not disappearing. I was afraid, you know, if I didn't put enough on, it was going to disappear. I'm going out to the tip and pulling it back towards the, towards that yellow. This is a really big brush for this job. It's not, it's not a big brush, but for this job of going in and just hitting those colors. So I am getting some, you know, brush strokes outside of the lines and I'm fine with that. I am really enjoying this project. I hope that you guys are too. And if you are, make sure that you leave me a comment about it because I do have a few more of these bags. So let's go ahead and hit those stems. That's fun. And you, you need to get all of your ink tents wet because that that uh, activation of it with the water is what makes it permanent. And this brush is bigger than these stems. So, you know, Again, color is going to work its way out, and I'm okay with that. And what I can do is I can even, ooh, that probably wasn't the best thing, was it? Look, if you don't like something, you can somewhat blot it out. Like I said, I am going to go back in and do a little bit of doodling on top after it's dry. There was just way too much of that color on those on those stems, but I'm going to put some more things down in here. So that's what, what I'm going to do. I might even, let's see, just put a little bit of that color on there. I think just sort of mush a bit of color around, not too much. But just sort of dull that down just a smidge and rub some of this color off the brush. Ooh, all right. You know, I'm going to see if I can pick up a little bit more of this. Kind of like, how do you fix a mistake? Well, first you have to decide, is it really, is it really a mistake? 
or is it just an opportunity to try something else? Good enough. <laughs> I just want to go in and doodle some more. So here it is, all finished. We started with this, and we got to here. And really, very simple tools. You could do this with colored pencils on the canvas even, regular color pencils. Watercolor pencils would work too. And uh, markers, or regular paint. It's all up to you. I am really excited to see how this looks. I know I didn't put any other background in on this, so the tape was a little bit um, superfluous, but you know what? That's okay. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do, so I wanted to be prepped for it. But making something that is um, useful and beautiful I think is pretty darn cool. And if I wanted to, I could give this a quick iron just to maybe heat set it. I don't know that anything is going to come out. I have a beautiful bag ready to take to the shops. And if you look at it here, after it dried, the paint and the ink really didn't come through to the other side that much. Making something useful with a doodle of something that's real. <laughs> I think that hits all the bases, right? Remember, check out my information down below for the materials that I used. Go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>